Hello, Joe here from Infinity of Tacoma. Today I'm going to tell you about this absolutely beautiful 2022 Tesla Model S. Uh, in 2022 you can get the Tesla Model S in two versions. You can get the regular S, which this one is, or you can get the Plaid. The Plaid is a high octane, high performance, 1000 horsepower version of the Model S, which is really fast, one of the fastest accelerating cars you can buy. Uh, but uh, this is still pretty remarkably fast. If you compare it to the Plaid, it might not seem quite as fast, but zero to 60, three seconds, top speed 150 miles an hour. Uh, it's still faster than most other vehicles on the road. Uh, and to some people, you could say it's even uncomfortably fast, how quickly this thing accelerates. It's, only, it's like having your own personal roller coaster. That little you know, feeling in your stomach when going down that first drop on a roller coaster, you can get in this vehicle under heavy acceleration. It is quite amazing. Um, but the nice thing too is that if you don't opt for the uh, plaid version, you get a little bit longer range. In fact, this is aside from the uh, Lucid Air, this is the longest uh, range battery electric vehicle that you can buy. It has a fully charged range of about 400 miles. Uh, and like I said, aside from uh, the Lucid Air, which uh, you know those are $180,000. Uh, I haven't seen too many used ones either. Um, there's no other battery electric vehicle that can go further than a Model S. And uh, the other thing about Tesla is, uh, you know, if you, you can buy like that, um, you, could, you could buy a Lucid Air with the 500 mile range, but the one thing that you're not going to have that Tesla has is the proprietary charging network. And that really is the ace in the hole for Tesla, is your amazing supercharger network. There's two within uh, six miles of us. I recently actually just watched a video, uh, I did tell you to check it out yourself on YouTube, Brian Shaw, he's a popular Tesla and EV YouTuber. He actually talked about his experience of using third party chargers. He's owns a few Tesla vehicles, he has a lot of experience with the Tesla superchargers. He recently purchased a brand new Rivian and he wanted to do a road trip on it with his wife. Well, he ran into lots of problem charging. I mean, all these third party chargers he went to, they either wouldn't work, they'd charge at a lot slower rate, <laughs> than uh, what they were supposed to. And he said he probably added two or three hours to his trip total just by uh, going to different chargers or uh, having issues with chargers. And he said that really kind of showed him the amazing reliability of Tesla superchargers. We get spoiled with uh, Tesla superchargers. I deal a lot with proven Teslas at our store. Um, so I'm supercharging Teslas all the time. And I also own a Tesla myself, uh, Model 3 uh, Standard Range Plus 2019. So I have lots of experience with supercharging. And yeah, I guess the only gripe that I usually have with supercharging is sometimes it's full. This Federal Way one gets pretty full, so sometimes you might have to wait 10 minutes for an open slot. But uh, rarely do you have any issues of Tesla chargers. They, you just plug it in, they seem to always work. Maybe every once in a while I might go to a supercharger station where one of the superchargers might be out of service. But uh, compared to what Ryan experienced with his, uh, you know, using a third party charging with his Rivian, uh, it seems to be almost a nightmare. And I have heard of instances where people have bought uh, non-Tesla EVs and they've actually traded them for Tesla EVs just because of having issues of finding uh, charging. Uh, so you have that ace in the hole uh, with Tesla. You have their proprietary supercharging network. They have 25,000, maybe 30,000 now superchargers throughout the world, the majority of them in the United States. You can pretty much travel anywhere uh, in the United States with this car uh, using Tesla superchargers and having that 400 mile range uh, definitely helps too. And the navigation system will always uh, make sure you get to where you need to go. So right now I'm only at 97 miles of range right now. We got to charge this one up. So keep that in mind when I uh, add this to the navigation. But for instance, if I want to drive to Spokane, the car is going to figure out for me. You just, you just uh, put it in there and the Tesla will figure out where you need to go for supercharging. So it's going to have me charge in uh, North Bend for 30 minutes. Then I'm going to charge in Moses Lake for 20 minutes and then I'll make it to Spokane of about 21% uh, left on the battery. And keep in mind, I don't have a full battery. It's only at 97 miles. A full charge is about 400 miles. But like I said, uh, you just use a navigation system and your Tesla will have your back. It will figure out, you know, if you need to supercharge, it's, you know, it, it is going to be a lifestyle change, you know, going from a battery electric vehicle from a gas vehicle you do have to think a little bit further ahead when you do plan some trips to make sure that you have enough charging where you go and if there's a supercharger close by. But usually in most cases, unless you live in the middle of nowhere, there's usually a Tesla supercharger pretty close to you. Okay, so uh, 2021, uh, the Model S went through a pretty uh, substantial revision. Uh, this is a 2022 model. Uh, and I guess the 
you know, the biggest thing they'll notice, the, the outside has stayed very similar on the Model S. It's a beautiful exterior. They didn't really need to <laughs> do anything to make it look better. Uh, I'm glad they actually left it alone. But they did upgrade the interior. The up interior was, uh, you know, getting a little dated. They improved a little bit, but it's an interior design going all the way back to 2012 when the Model S first came out. Now you can see a completely redesigned interior. And most notably is this yoke steering wheel. And obviously um, it has gotten some criticism. Some people don't like it. Um, I have no issue. I've driven this car a few times. I've moved it around and you know, obviously you have to, you're not gonna have steering wheel up here, but I have no issue driving it around with the yoke. I actually like it. And the thing I really like about the yoke is the visibility. Since, you know, you just have the steering wheel ending here, you have all this, uh, you have so much more visibility of your gauge cluster and instruments and stuff like that. And I kind of like the way the yoke feels. But if you're not crazy about the yoke, you know, you can get a 2020 Model S. We actually have a beautiful 2020 Model S at the time of making this video. Uh, with the older interior of only 5,000 miles on it. So, uh, you know, I'll actually give you a chance if you want to come and look at this one and compare it to the older Model S. It would be a great comparison that 2020 versus this 2022. Um, they also upgraded the uh, screen. Uh, the previous uh, Model S's had a uh, vertical screen. Uh, now they went to the horizontal design, which we've seen in the 3 and Y. Uh, huge display screen, lots of information. Uh, the uh, the uh, user interface is very Apple-esque. Um, I drive all sorts of cars, uh, you know, and this is my opinion, but you know, like I said, I've been in the car business a long time. I drive lots of cars. We deal with lots of very high-end cars at Infiniti of Tacoma, pre-owned ones. Um, nobody has a user interface like this. Th this to me is light years ahead of what everyone else has. And uh, going from this, going to an older car, or not an older car, but a car with an older infotainment system, it's like going back in time. It's like going from a smartphone to a flip phone. Uh, and it shows me, you know, I guess, you know, there is a smart car, uh, quote unquote, you know, the, the Mercedes smart car. Uh, but Tesla has really shown us, just like smartphones and dumb phones of Apple versus the old flip phones, there's smart cars and dumb cars. This is a smart car. Once you experience a smart car, it's hard to go back to a dumb car. It, it, just like it's hard to go back, you know, from an iPhone to a flip phone or, or, or uh, you know, an Android power phone to a flip phone. Uh, it's that drastic of a difference. And the, and the thing too is uh, with uh, Tesla's over their updates, they're constantly uh, improving it. They're constantly giving updates, adding features, improving things. Quite amazing stuff. So your blinkers, all that stuff around the steering wheel, your headlight buttons, your horn button, um, pretty pretty easy to use. And the car uh, basically can tell you, tell um, if, if where you want to go. So the car, like it's a smart car. Well, I'm gonna put my foot in the brake. I just hit, I, I just hit the brake pedal. It knows I'm gonna want to go forward. It can tell that uh, you know that's where I want to go. But let's say I uh, move the car up here. Okay, now you can see I'm parked in front of a wall. I just uh, put my foot in the brake. It can tell I'm in front of a wall, so it says, it, it knows I'm probably gonna go in reverse, so it just puts it in reverse for me. It's that easy. Okay, so what if you do if you don't want the car to you know, decide for you, or you wanna go in a direction, different direction what the car thinks, well that's okay. You have these things right here. You can swipe it forward to go forward. You swipe it back to go in reverse, you hit P to put it in park, and you hit here to put it in neutral. It's that easy. Uh, obviously a different, different, little bit of a different learning curve uh, for some people. Not everyone's crazy about it. You know, I'm driving in the parking lot, but you can see, you know, I'm driving this thing just fine with this, uh, <laughs> with one hand with this yoke. Not an issue for me. I don't think it'll be an issue for most people. I like it, but you know, different strokes for different folks. Okay. Let's keep on rolling this video along. So this is a clean Carfax vehicle, uh, 3,464 miles on it. Uh, we have autopilot, which is traffic aware cruise control, an absolute godsend if you drive on the highway and uh, stop and go traffic. Uh, uh, traffic aware cruise control allows you to brake and accelerate in your own lane and it will steer you in your own lane all the way, all the way to a complete stop and it'll get going again. Some systems, it's kind of annoying you come to a complete stop uh, you have to actually reactivate the system, not the same of autopilot. Autopilot just wants you to show you that you're keeping your hand in the wheel, paying attention. It will not deactivate. You can just go for hours on the highway and stop and go traffic. And the autopilot will not disengage unless it thinks that you're not paying attention and you're not keeping your hand in the wheel. Awesome stuff. 
All right, so obviously, uh, being in 2022, we have the latest in the infotainment system. This has the AMD Raisin processor, very fast, very cool. Like I said, this is almost like Apple-esque as far as the user interface goes. Um, you can have uh, Google Maps. We showed you how to find uh, supercharging. Uh, you can stream music. Uh, you can also stream Netflix, Hulu, Disney, Twitch, TikTok. You can play video games. And then we have the toy box where you have the uh, colorizer and stuff like that where you can change the color of your vehicle. Avatar, to maybe if you decide to wrap your car, you can change the avatar color. Uh, you can do a light show. You have the boom box where you can, you know, talk through the horn speaker, things like that. You can make the horn sound like a goat or uh, it can play techno music. You have a multi-track recorder. Uh, the list of stuff just goes on and on. It's just quite amazing. <laughs> the, le the level of depth of this user interface. We have a nice wireless charger right here. Uh, really uh, nice upgrade in the interior styling. Nice uh, perforated seats. Uh, Tesla only uses uh, synthetic leather. There's no uh, real leather for Tesla, so there's uh, only different interior colors. There's no upgraded interior. You have this nice suede cloth uh, material. Uh, big uh, panoramic roof panel. You can't get an opening sunroof anymore. I think 2016 or 17 is the last year you get an opening sunroof on the Model S, but they just dropped it completely for this big roof panel. Obviously, I, I think I prefer this because uh, the few that I, I have come across with the sunroof on the older ones, they tend to make noise. And I do have, uh, I do worry about that sunroof breaking. Uh, it's a little, it's kind of a little bit complex and it does add weight to it. Okay, so you do see some damage to the seat. <laughs> We're well aware of this. I did order a new seat panel through Tesla. If you're curious, it was $500 for a new seat panel. And it'll be about an hour's worth of labor for Tesla to install a new panel. So hopefully by the time you come and look at that, we'll have that repaired for you. Beautiful body. Uh, they didn't make a huge uh, departure as far as the exterior design for the Model S. Uh, they did uh, re, uh, re, uh, refresh it in 2016. Uh, Model S, I think it was 2012 when it first came out. But it's a beautiful looking car. And uh, it's not just beautiful, it's actually the, the Model S uh, exterior design is one of the lowest drag coefficient vehicles on planet Earth. Uh, so not only is it beautiful, it's also a very, very efficient design. So obviously Tesla didn't want to mess with it too much because they had a good thing going. Lots of interior space back here. Uh, you have a cargo area cover. You have a little bit extra storage under here. Normally you'd have a gas tank back here. But uh, this being an EV, uh, you don't have a gas tank so you have a little bit extra storage under there. Of course you can fold down the rear seats too if you need more space. And a uh, nice uh, addition too for the rear seat passengers is you have this screen so they can watch uh, Netflix, Hulu, things like that on it. You can play music, uh, you can uh, operate the climate control system, all sorts of cool stuff. Absolutely beautiful automobile. Um, I think Tesla's are the leaders in EV technology. I think they are about five to ten years ahead of everyone else as far as uh, you know efficiency, charging, user interface. There's probably not a ton of uh, pre-owned 2022 Tesla Model S's or brand new ones for that matter. I, I know you, uh, right now you have to order one. There's a little bit of a wait. So if you do really like this one and you're a little bit further away uh, than where we are, we have complimentary shipping to Washington, all of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. We can put this in our car hall. We can tow it to you. And we also can arrange shipping. It can't be complimentary, but just about anywhere in the U.S. We have a big pre-owned business, so we ship cars all over the place. Another nice thing, uh, normally uh, uh, most gas cars will have an engine in the front. Obviously, this being an electric car, there's no engine. So you have a frunk. Look at this. You also have this nice car co cover. Uh, but it's also additional storage and it's also a safety feature because uh, you have a crumple zone that's 60% larger than a gas car with no engine here. So you have all this space to absorb crash energy in a frontal collision. And in some instances, in a really bad frontal collision, the engine can get pushed inside the passenger compartment. Obviously, that's something you won't have to worry about with a vehicle like this. Uh, the Tesla Model S is a remarkable vehicle. Um, and when it comes to luxury, 
uh, obviously you can have a posh interior, you can have, you know, fancy styling and, th and things like that. But for me, what I equate to luxury is uh, smoothness. Uh, comparing this especially to a gas car, uh, you know, even if you get the most luxurious gas car, you, t you get a gas-powered Mercedes or BMW, you're going to feel the engine vibrating, you're going you're to feel uh, the, the transmission change gears and stuff like that. When you get into a vehicle like this, it is just so smooth. There's only one gear. You don't feel gear changes. It's absolutely smooth and powerful. Uh, how smooth, how linear the acceleration is, the power delivery, uh, you know, that's luxury right there. <laughs> then you have the amazing autopilot uh, advanced driver's assistance uh, system. Uh, you know, that's a luxury too, to have uh, the workload taken off you and stop and go traffic and driving on the highway. Uh, that's a big luxury amenity. And then uh, the user interface te te technology. Uh, you know, Apple is considered, you know, the premier, uh, you know, smartphone maker uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, buying uh, tablets or smartphones or computers for that matter. Apple is regarded, you know, to be one of the best ones out there. Likewise, Tesla has put a lot of energy into making an amazing infotainment system um, with lots of features. And you have an amazing smartphone app that, you know, compares uh, with your vehicle. You can pull up live camera views. You can control the rate of charge. So many amazing things. Uh, I could probably go on for hours about the amazing aspects of this car. Obviously, I'm a big fan of the product. We deal with lots of pre-owned Teslas here. I'm the used car manager, so I like to buy Teslas for inventory. We sell lots of them. I own one myself. Um, you know, you can buy a more expensive car, but will it necessarily be better than this? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I guess it depends on what your wants and needs are, but I think for a lot of people, when you experience the amazing aspects of this Tesla, the user interface, the tech, the features, the smoothness, the power, the 400 mile range, it would be hard to go back to any other vehicle in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. Thanks so much for taking the time today to watch this video. Hopefully see you soon and have a wonderful day.